Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Today's warehouse needs to keep inventory moving smoothly and quickly. Meet these challenges with on-demand warehouse labeling from Brother Mobile Solutions. Our mobile and industrial printers will help optimize your operations to achieve the speed, reliability, and durability your warehouse needs. With easy integration for existing warehouse technology, convenient portability, and upfront affordability, Brother Mobile Solutions is at your side when it comes to warehouse labeling. Try one for free today by visiting brothermobilesolutions.com slash newwarehouse or click the link in the show notes. That's it's brothermobilesolutions.com slash new warehouse to try one for free today. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. Today's episode, I am going to be joined by Leary Hercules, better known as Herc, who has been on the show previously. Um, but this time he's coming on the show to tell us about his new venture. He's now the founder and CEO at Heft IQ. And he's going to tell us a little bit about Heft IQ, what it is they're bringing to the market, and some of the challenges that it's addressing when you're working with, when you're a brand working with multiple 3PLs, and how the tools that they're building are really going to help you to to better understand what's going on in, in your fulfillment, and also how it's going to help you to, to grow too as a brand as well so herc welcome back to the thank show you. how are you thank you kevin um be great thank you super excited with what we're setting out to do here definitely definitely i'm very interested to to hear about it as well and, and happy to to bring you back on the the show to to talk to us so so i i mean let's let's start it off what is this new venture what is heft iq what are you what are you guys doing so we're building optimization and visibility platform for supply chain, specifically targeting brands. Okay. And the word heft came from a mid-century old English meaning to pick up something heavy. So we want to do all the heavy lifting on the back-end logistics side so the brands can focus on growing their demand through their marketing tech and we handle all the rest. Mm, interesting and 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 so I, i'm curious you know you, you talked about it, it's going to bring this this stuff together and do the heavy lifting for the for the brands so so uh, you know we when you were on the show previously we were talking about you know your your previous role and, and what was going on there but you know you know i mean in working through kind of your your career and, and what you've done and now getting to this point i mean what was the the hole in the market that you saw that kind of made you say, you know, I want to go after this this problem and, and bring a solution. Yeah. So with the growth of e-com, e-commerce platforms like Shopify, mm -hmm. you have a lot of brands being around the one to two million dollars annual recurring revenue mm -hmm. price point. And we have three point nine million brands in the US. Yeah. Two million brands reside on Shopify. Oh, wow. um, Shop, yeah, Shopify as an e-com platform is very modern in terms of leveraging a lot of APIs and, and they have a right. robust marketplace as well. And so brands set out and they hit this inflection point where they need distribution to get to one day, two day delivery, mm. right? And, and we see it sometimes even in the model of the door dashes where you order a meal for $12 and delivery is $10. Mm -hmm. And it, it incentivizes users from purchasing because of the yeah. shipping cost. 
Yeah, I've seen that before. I've, <laughs> I've paid like eighteen dollars for like a coffee because I <laughs> needed to get it somewhere and I couldn't couldn't get out at the second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and so and so these brands, uh, in terms of understanding their their customers, meeting customer needs, having great products, they're coming into a logistics piece that is very fragmented mm. and very tough to navigate. And from my former experience. I see brands taking up to three months to decide where do we need warehousing or fulfillment space? Where right. should it be located? Yeah. And navigating that space takes a lot of time and it's very difficult to pass the $2 million inflection point. Mm-hmm. Another thing we noticed is that there's a lack of really advanced analytical tools for brands to understand the logistics space itself. And so even though there's logistics visibility platforms, they're addressing the transport logistics industries and they're not targeting the growth of the brands themselves. They're right. targeting optimizing the logistics industry. Mm-hmm. And so we're taking a brand approach where we are saying, okay, we are going to leverage some tools we're going to build into the Shopify marketplace to allow brands to grow. And while they're growing, we are also onboarding on the second side of the marketplace, the logistics provider, the fulfillment centers, the three PLs, the warehousing spaces, mm. and organizing that in such a way that it helps the brands navigate that space way easier. And then getting into the AI driven order management. A brand should not be worried about where the product is should be staged and where it should be fulfilled from. Mm. We have AI tools to allow us to make those decisions on behalf of the products. So that's what we're building out right now at uh, Heft IQ. Hmm. Very interesting. And I, I think you had a really good point in there about, you know, these e-commerce brands are, you know, like you said, there's almost the 4 million of them out there. Right. Cool. And you know, it, it, it's, and so many of them too, I think are, you know, they're just, they're just born out of people, kind of trying to figure things out or, or tinkering around, not necessarily people that are coming from, you know, logistics or, or warehousing fulfillment background. So so when they go to try and figure out, you know, they're outgrowing the garage, right, so to speak, yeah. or the, the basement or whatever they're doing, like it's, it, they don't necessarily know what to do or where to go. So I think oftentimes, and, you know, I just talked to somebody recently as well, and, and they, they had, like, started their own 3PL because when they were trying to figure it out, like, they had so many bad experiences with 3PLs, right? So yeah. they were like, oh, like maybe we could figure this out our, ourselves, right? Yeah. So, it, I, I mean, it's interesting because you you hit these these points, like you said, where you're you're growing as a brand and you know you have to do something, Oftentimes, like you may make a decision just because you have to like make a decision like or, you know, the business is not going to make that that growth point. You have this great opportunity to to do something and you don't necessarily have the background to know. So so being able to to build out tools that can help you make those decisions, like you said, like utilizing AI to figure out where should the inventory actually be at. I think is a is a great thing because as you're you're operating and trying to to grow your brand and maybe your your strong suit is actually like on the the marketing side and yeah. instead right like yeah. you don't want to have to worry about like well where should the inventory actually be and how much I don't, do I need yeah exactly where do I need it yeah yeah so so I I mean I think it's a a great thing that you're you're building out but I know in our our kind of previous discussion as well one of the the things that you're trying to address and I'm curious what you what you've seen here where you start to look at you know you, you, maybe you you need a presence like in the you know the northeast and then yeah. maybe you need a presence in the southwest depending on where your customers are and, you know, you start to kind of work with maybe multiple different 3PLs in, in different yeah. areas. Where do challenges, like, start to arise in that type of situation? And and how um, how is kind of Heft IQ going to yeah. address those types of challenges? Sure. So the industry is filled with some warehouse management systems. Mm-hmm that have undefined APIs, and then there's warehouse management systems 
that have defined APIs. Yeah. And then there's the rise of a lot of the integration systems that seek to build connectors to connect one EDI system to another EDI system, for example. Mm. And so EDI is a very old spec. The API economy gave rise to a lot of Silicon Valley companies as we know it today. Yeah. And so in the logistics industry, and what we're seeing, it's the rise of the API economy, the connectivity economy, and the integration platforms are starting to lose some power just because there's more visibility into the data exchange part of it. Mm. And so part of what we are going to attempt to do this year is to open source a standard that the industry could galvanize around mm. that makes data sharing way easier so that the actual problems can be solved and not today where you are being charged for integrations yeah. because yeah. integrations is a little black box tucked away in the 3 pl world and you're kind of held to ransom because you have physical products toward a location and it's very difficult to move it to another 3 pl mm. And so the accountability part of the 3 pl industry is going to be very important. And a big piece of that is access to the data and building data streaming platforms that you can actually build real-time analytics on. Hmm. Interesting. And, interesting. And, yeah. those, and those technologies are not innate to the logistics industry. Right. And so attracting talent as a brand, you don't have the bandwidth to attract. And, and that's not even your core competency of hiring data engineers and building data platforms. Right. You want to really focus on your multi-channel strategy, your social media strategy, your demand gen, that stuff, not all the other back-end data-related stuff. And so being in both industries, we have the talent at FIQ to build those while we also understand the problem domain and the problems to be solved. Right, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think it's interesting too because, I mean, kind of even like back to a previous, you know, conversation, there's like these people that are, are building some of these e-commerce brands. I mean, you know, talk about the, the bandwidth there. I mean, you know, I've been shocked to hear like the size of some e-commerce brands yeah. and like the small amount of people that are actually like behind those brands, right? Like yeah. it's it's not like these huge, huge teams and and you know, you can build pretty quickly. You get a product that goes, you know, viral or something like that. All of a sudden, your yes. you know your volume goes through the roof, and yeah. you don't necessarily need a, a huge team to really support that. Yeah. So, to your point, I mean, you know, you're probably not thinking about like you know bringing in data engineers or data scientists or anything like yeah. that to to do these types of things. So, so so being able to to do that and and kind of have somebody help you to understand that and actually I think even help you understand like what what data is important to you and, yeah. and what to look at I think is a, a huge thing but you you also mentioned in there the accountability right mm-hmm. so so tell us a little bit about I guess what you mean by you know accountability of like your your 3PL partners yeah. and what that actually would look like and and maybe too I even you know right now we talked about you know brands working with multiple different 3PLs. Uh, I mean, is if they don't have some type of tool in place or, or something like HeftIQ with that kind of data aggregation and, and understanding, I mean, it, can they really feasibly even hold a, a 3PL accountable? I think it has to start with us partnering with the brands, right, and then the 3PLs. I'm wanting to get access to those brands and playing nicely mm. in that they're going to make the data accessible. What I've seen it's in the industry, it's, it runs on very small margins mm-hmm. and there's a whole growth of automated warehouse fulfillment with autonomous robots, right. driverless forklifts, right? Trying to get to larger margins. But what happens is, is that the lack of tracking Automation from the time of ordering to the delivery of the product impacts the brand. It does not impact the 3PL. Right. And so the 3PL is hiding in the shadows and not really feeling the consequence of non-performance 
because the customer only sees the brand and the brand promises. Mm. So if I do a two-day shipping and it comes in three days, I have a bad brand experience, right. regardless of the 3 pl yeah. and, so, and I think having that visibility on the 3 pls performance is going to help smooth now the accountability piece between the brand and their customer. Interesting. So, I mean, do you think that, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> are, are 3PLs going to be uh, upset with you <laughs> for, you know, holding them more accountable or giving them more visibility into what's going on? Because, I, I mean, you, your example there, like you mentioned, you know, it's supposed to be like a, a two-day delivery, right? And it ends yeah. up delivering on the, the third day. Yeah. You know, it, I think it's it's easy for a 3PL to say like, oh, well, that was... Um, the carrier, right? When yes. maybe the reality is they actually picked it late, right? Yes. Uh, or they missed like the cutoff or something. So, I mean, is that the type of thing like that you're trying to give more transparency or, or visibility to? Yes, in real time. Because what I've seen right. being on the other side of the, the fence is that brands would have quarterly business reviews with three PLs. Mm. So three months after the fact, you're having a conversation yeah. to try to make them accountable, which is not very timely. Yeah. And you probably would experience customer churn. What you really need to be able to do is to see the problems in real time, have the problems addressed in real time, because mm. you're sharing this dashboard with a 3PL as well, yeah. holding them accountable. So once they understand their performance is very visible in real time, the performance standards start going up, the non-cooperative 3PL start falling away, the, the cooperating 3PLs, they start generating more business mm. because now there's a platform where brands can say, these 3PLs are very transparent and open and we want to go with them. We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Step, step, step. Do you know how many steps your warehouse workers are taking a day? When your workers are walking, you're losing money. Endless trips to the printer or computer add up fast. Newcastle's mobile industrial carts with integrated power eliminate the walking to stationary printers and computers, keeping workers focused on high value tasks. Often, doubling their output thousands of powered cart installations including ones at the new warehouse's own micro fulfillment center and in my previous jobs prove that newcastle customers get more done and save money to learn more head to newcastle sys.com that's newcastle sys.com yeah yeah i think that's a great point because even the you know my operations experience like you know, some operations we would do like um, lean daily management, right? Like where yeah. we would review <clears throat> the metrics and performance, but but still like from the day before, and like yes. even sometimes like I would question that, like it's not, you know, it's not it's not necessarily relevant a- yes. anymore. In, in some cases, like you know, this was a problem yesterday at, at one yeah. p.m. Like we should have been yeah. working on it at you know one o five p.m. Right? Like yes. not like waiting to today to figure out like oh um we had a problem then now let's yes. re- let's root cause it and you know by the time we figure out the cause and then a solution you know it's a couple of days later and yeah. maybe it's not even really a problem anymore right yeah. so like you said like the quarterly i mean it's you know you, you should be doing like the, the qbrs but like there should be transparency in between that as well to see like problems are are actually happening because like you said if you have you know three months of product shipping late to your customers you got three months of potential you know losing customers right where you need to like get that kind of taken care of like right away so so i mean really interesting i think what you're doing and i I think it makes 
total sense, especially, you know, looking at the market and like, as you said, there's so many e-commerce brands out there and so many that are trying to figure out, you know, how to do fulfillment right, especially as like, you know, there's, there's pressure because consumers are expecting certain service levels based on, you know, larger companies like, you know, Amazon basically, you know, pushing people to, to have those expectations. Like when you say like, okay, I have this great, great brand that I've, I've come up with, but you know, how am I going to deliver my product? Like, you know, in in two days, right. Or the next day or something like that, you know, being able to find the right partner is, is a huge thing, but then being able to understand, you know, whether it really is the right partner based on that yeah. data vis- visibility and, and transparency, yeah. I think is a is another huge thing. So, so I, I mean, it sounds like Heft IQ. I guess like the initial thing that you would do for a brand is, is certainly help them to understand, give them that baseline, like of where you know where do they need to be uh, yeah. first, and then when they're there you know, how is the performance going for the, the 3PL? Like, are they meeting our standards and, and really understanding like problems in, in real time, as you mentioned. Yeah. But then I think there's a, another portion to that, right? Which is you guys are, are building out some growth tools as well. Yes. So, so, I mean, how are you taking like this data now? Cause it sounds like you guys are really focused on the, the data aspect and yeah. how are you taking that data and then uh, using it in a way to, to enable growth for, for these mm-hmm. e-commerce brands? So there are a couple of common problem areas that brands experience. Mm-hmm. Real-time inventory tracking. How much product do I have sitting away? Yeah. Where are these orders destined for? The destination of orders, where do we need product stage to get to one day, two day? Mm. So we're building those as well. Right. You have a brand, yeah. you have a company, you may have several brands. What are the fast-selling brands? What are the slow, slow movers? Mm-hmm. And what is your risk of going low on your inventory? So, so we're creating some of the machine learning models to, to alert the brands. And then your days of supply remaining based on your existing demand. If your demand was remaining consistent, you'd be out of supply by this specific date. Mm. Right? And so that gives a, a brand a, a really nice snapshot to start growing out. And then as they start getting further into the 3PL world, we want to be able to be their strategic partner to walk them through that world and then say, okay, looking at your order history, we're building a shipping cost optimizer. Mm. How do I minimize shipping costs for my customers? Right? Is it the, the, the product dimensions? Is it the order size, the packing? Is it the location? Is it the shipping mode? On FedEx today and UPS today, USPS today have two different, they have all different rates, shipping rates. How do I optimize my shipping mode to reduce the shipping cost to my customers? And then on top of that, we're going to layer on a, a layer of our dynamic order routing. Right? So based on the shipping cost optimizer, an order comes in, where do I fulfill it from to minimize the shipping cost and to get it to one day, two day? And so all of that is a, a lot of like machine learning, which is not innate to the industry. So is the... Now, I mean, on the like the optimization side and like this kind of routing side as well, too. I mean, is this a tool that now the the 3PL will be utilizing? So it's because it's kind of like dictating no. like where brand, to ship it? Yeah, a brand may use two, three, four 3PLs. Right. And to a brand, you shouldn't care about the 3PL world mm, except okay. their performance. You should be able to route an order to where it should come from to get to minimal shipping cost and one, two day. So oh, gotcha, gotcha. So the, okay. Yeah, so the model is all, almost like the data center model where you don't yeah. go spin up a virtual machine anymore. It's all serverless. Mm. So it. I want to abstract away the logistics layer. So now it looks like one big 3PL instead of four separate systems to mm. manage. Interesting. So... So, so basically, before the order gets to the three PL, it's, it's yes. doing this optimization, and it's yes. it's saying like, okay, you're gonna go to the the location we have in I don't know yes. Ohio or something, right? Yes. And then 
you know, the three PL just does what they're supposed to do, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Yes. And so what a lot of the tools that are built into the WMS at the three PL level, we are building upstream mm. at the econ platform level that then is able to abstract away the three PL rule. Got so it. a single 3PL, you may route an order within your network of warehouses. But from a brand perspective, we're going to route it across 3PLs and across warehouses. Mm, interesting. I, I like that because there's no, there's really no chance of it getting to like the wrong yes. location or yes. not necessarily wrong, but like not the, you know, the perfect order location. Right? Yes. So you you essentially take that away. And I, I think even cause I, I've seen sometimes too, where, you know, you, you get an order in at your, your warehouse and you look at it and you're like, mm, like, you know, I, like I know there's another location like on the West coast. Like, why are we shipping this out of the, the East yes. coast? Right. Yes. And, but the three PL is like, well, like, you know, it's here, I'm going to ship it. Right. So, yeah. uh, so you, you don't really necessarily always get the chance to like catch that and, and yeah. fix it. So I, I think that is if it's happening on that higher upstream, like you said. I, I think that yeah. makes a, a lot more sense to to get that full full optimization. Yeah. 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 So I mean, how I I guess for for brands right that that might be listening and you know hearing what you're what you're saying here, like you know how was something like that? I mean, other other than from like a you know a cost savings perspective on the shipping or something like that. I mean, I mean, how does that also like help their their brand just just grow as a as an entity uh, as like a whole? So operations, as you start scaling up your brand, mm -hmm. it becomes an operational nightmare. So right. I've spoken to hundreds of supply chain operations folks. And it's the same. They're juggling spreadsheets, yeah. Excels. It's not real time, and it's consistent across multiple brands, including the aggregators who are buying brands and inheriting the operational nightmares as well. Hmm. And so it's really, really tough operationally without a platform like HeftIQ. Hmm. Very interesting, and I, I think you know it's really interesting. Kind of this this gap that you you've seen here in the market, and it, I mean it makes total sense. And I, I love that you're kind of taking it and, and aggregating all this data and and putting it in a way that uh, these brands are going to be able to to take action on the data, yeah. right? Because yeah. I, I think too, it's like you know brands. They, I mean we generate so much data no matter what we do like nowadays. Right. And you know, every little thing is, is generating this data, but a lot of times, you know, especially like we talked about how people are, are creating these brands, but they're not necessarily coming from a, a background of understanding the supply chain process or yeah. even understanding like what to do with, with data. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. sometimes like these people just kind of like stumbled on a product and decided to put it out there and it, it yeah. worked and then I try to figure it out. So, so being able to, to see that more early on, like in the, the brand's growth and then take those actions, I think yeah. is really a great thing. So it seems like something really, really interesting and, and useful that you guys are, are building here at, at Heft yeah. IQ. Yeah. Um, so I, I appreciate you coming on and, and talking about it and, and giving us these these insights and how to kind of tackle some of these these challenges that brands oftentimes face. If people are interested in, in getting into Heft IQ or, or learning more information about Heft IQ, how can they do that? HeftIQ.com. We're also trying to build out a, a community with sufficient content to help brands understand the lay of the land. Okay. And to grow. For me, I'm very passionate about small businesses and businesses who are growing into scale. So yeah. for me, I've come from a number of domains where there's available information. Like if you were to, to, to look up EDIs, it's a very mm. black box thing. Everyone is kind of like hiding all the standards and codes and everything else. It's very black boxy. Yeah. And for me, I want to be able to expose the information I think I think we have a responsibility to create jobs, grow GDP. So it's not just about okay, we see a space in the marketplace. It's really I'm really passionate about how do we ensure companies have the information they need to grow. Mm. They're very transparent. 
So we we about to build a community as well. We have a subscribe link down to the bottom, fiq.com, and just subscribe, and, and we're starting to create some content. All right, great, and we'll definitely be looking forward to to that content rolling out, and I'll be subscribing myself. I'm definitely interested <laughs> to see what the, what that's going to look like, and yeah. and definitely always appreciate an opportunity to to learn more about what's happening in the industry. And we'll definitely put all that information at the newwarehouse.com as well. So people can easily find it. Uh, so Herc is great to, to have you back on the, the show here and, and find thank out about this you. new venture. So, so thank you very much yeah. for your, your time today. You've been listening to the new warehouse podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at the new warehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the new warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for the new warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.